Good afternoon, folks. Welcome back to a new episode of Angels Recap. So, that series with the Twins was a bit uneventful considering we had postponements in that series. Now, you might be asking yourself, Matt, why were there postponements in this series? Because don't postponements typically happen due to weather delays? Well, my friend, that is not the case. Of course, if you aren't, in case you have been living under a rock, we are in a pandemic, and we've been in one for the last year or so now. We're about 13 months in, if I'm being just about exact here. And after last night's, or Friday night's Angels game, there was a Twins player who tested positive for the virus, along with an umpire in that game, as well as a couple of staff members for the Minnesota Twins. So out of caution, the league has post postponed today's Angels game, that was supposed to happen today, Sunday, and last night's Angels game, which was game two. We did get to play game one, and let, we'll talk about that one right now. I really do hope that the players and staff and ump that tested positive for the Twins, one of which I did already confirm, I already figured out was Andrelton Simmons, the former Angel. Um, let's all keep them in our thoughts and hope that they can overcome this virus, because the COVID pandemic has been a pain to deal with. Anyway, on to the game. Only one game from Friday night. Angels victorious. Score is 10-3, and wow, lots of scoring to go around here. So, the Twins had to put in a spot starter considering they had a lot of makeup games to do, a couple of which with the Boston Red Sox. So, they bring in a spot starter by the name of Lewis Torp. Lewis Torp is an Australian native, believe it or not. Not many Australian natives I know of or have seen play baseball. He goes, score, he goes scoreless into the fourth inning when Jared Walsh drills a two RBI base hit and makes it two nothing Angels. Andrew Heaney rolling five and a third scoreless was pulled for in favor of Aaron Slagers. Aww. And what did Slagers do? He blew it. You blew it! He gave up a RBI, two RBI double, it says here, to Mitch Garver. RBI base hit to Josh Donaldson, who I think I mentioned as a player to watch on our preview episode, to make it 3-2. Randy Dobnak was dealing for the Twins into the seventh inning. His story is really cool, guys. I suggest you go look it up and look at how Dobnak made it into the major leagues. It's a great story. Just search up on Google. Randy Dobnak, Journey to the Major Leagues, and I'm sure you'll find an article from like MLB.com or something. Anyway, back to the other scoring. With runners on second and third, Mike Trout, the best player in baseball, drills an RBI single, two RBI single, actually it was, through the hole and made it 4-3. to three. I'm glad that Mike Trout snapped out of his little slump, considering he doesn't really struggle a whole lot, even though he's and striking out a little bit more than I'd like to see. But anyway, moving on now. In the bottom of the seventh, with Dobnak still kicking some butt, he's got runners on base to deal with, though. David Fletcher doing David Fletcher things, punches the ball the other way to make it 5-3 to three Angels. And then Rocky Baldelli, the manager, decides to pull Dobnak, whose pitch count was getting up, in favor of a pitcher by the name of Caleb Thielbar. A lefty. So Mike Trout will face the new pitcher, Caleb Thielbar. Trout works the count to 2-2, two and two, and the Twins decide to not continue the at-bat and rather intentionally walk him, which loads the bases up for Justin Upton, just activated for this Friday night game. Now I want you to picture yourself in this situation. If you're down by two runs, and you're a lefty pitcher, who I believe is a pretty young pitcher. Bruh. And you're facing a veteran hitter in Justin Upton who's a right-handed hitter, and he can be streaky even though he's on kind of the cold part of his streak. What would you throw in this situation with a one-to-one -one count? They go back to the breaking ball. Take a ride with Justin Upton. Number 
42 heads towards home plate. I'm thinking he was thinking the same thing. High plane on the breaking ball, first pitch. Fastball, high plane, came right back with the same breaking ball, same zone, and this time he's ready, and he covered it. Grand slam! Jay up, going uptown! To be honest, I'd probably give up a home run in that same situation, but I don't know if I would have thrown a hanging breaking ball. A hanging breaking ball to a veteran hitter? With the bases loaded? That's not the pitch that you should throw, I don't think. I would maybe go fa I'd maybe go fastball, um, something like that, a, like a fastball inside, see if you can swing and miss, or maybe a, a slider in the um, downstairs. But that was a mistake pitch. Upton crushing it. That ball hasn't landed yet. Great Aha. reactions we saw there from Otani and Kurt Suzuki in the dugout. Jared Walsh decided to join in on the party with a solo home run of his own to right field. Impressive. And that would be the last of the runs scored in this game. They actually had to bring in a position player, did the Twins. Williams Astadio, nicknamed La Tortuga. What? He's a really good player. I've seen cool highlights of him hitting the ball. He throws a scoreless inning, throwing 46 mile an hour EFIS pitches that even maybe I could hit, even nope. though I probably can't hit a baseball to save my life. That is correct. Claudio gets the final outs in the ninth inning, despite having the bases loaded, and the Angels win that game 10 to 3. Everybody except Kirk Suzuki on the Angels had a hit. He went over four. Fletcher two for five with a RBI and two runs scored. Otani goes one for four with a hit and a run scored. Trout has two RBIs as part of a two for two night officially with a base hit. Upton's probably the biggest factor with four RBIs, all of which coming on that grand slam, of course, two for four. Jared Walsh, two for four, three RBIs. The, he had the two run double or two run single and the solo home run. Pools one for four with a hit. Jose Iglesias, two hits and a run scored, and Luis Tranjifo even got a hit with a run scored. Balance in the lineup is a key thing, and we did it right there. It's important to have depth scoring. Or scoring, sorry, I'm thinking of hockey now. Uh, and I'll do quack cast tomorrow. Hopefully I'll have that up to you guys by Tuesday, so stay tuned for that. Back on track now. Mitch Garver, the Twins, two hits at, with four at-bats, two RBIs, and Donaldson had an RBI with two base hits and four at-bats. All right, now with that all out the way, let's talk about the series Monday to Wednesday against the Texas Rangers. For game one, the Texas Rangers will go to a guy named Kohei Arihara, Hiroshima, Japan native, making his fourth career start at the major league level, one and one with a 307 ERA. I don't have much of a book on Arihara, so I guess we'll just have to see as it goes. And Dylan Bundy, well, there's no book needed on him. He is the ace of this staff, and he has been dealing all year long, striking out everybody, almost everybody, in his path. Next up, Jordan Lyles versus Shohei Otani for Game 2. So Jordan Lyles is probably the only Texas pitcher that I can think of that we actually struggled immensely against. I remember that one game... We faced him last year on Trout's birthday. Trout had a two-run home run that probably still hasn't landed yet against him. But other than that, not much other offense to speak of. So that should be a good matchup. Hopefully we can hit Jordan Lyles for a few runs. Lyles 1-0 with a 4.7 ERA. He is a very experienced pitcher, having pitched previously for the Pirates and the Milwaukee Brewers. And then the Wednesday game, it'll be... Mike Fulton-Nevich, wasn't he on the Braves? Well, the Braves let him go because they had seen something they didn't like with Fulton-Nevich. He had struggled a lot the past couple seasons, and they and, Tex, and he hopes that in Texas he can have a change of scenery. So that will also be interesting to see. Fulton-Nevich will get Jose Quintana. Quintana, it is critical that he bounce back after two bad starts, especially that one he had against the Florida Blue Jays. Correct! Owen one with a 16.2 ERA against Fulton Evich, who's 0-3. He did pitch really well in his last start against, I believe he pitched pretty well in his last start against Baltimore. 0-3, 5.63 ERA. 
the Rangers aren't don't have a whole lot of inspiring talent to speak of when it comes to their offense. Are you sure about that? But there are a few players that we do need to highlight and our players to watch. For the Texas Rangers, let's keep our eyes out for Isaiah Kiner Falefa. Isaiah Kiner Falefa has played a number of positions throughout his brief throughout his major league career, but now they settle him at third base. He is a native of Honolulu, Hawaii. Fourth round pick. He has played third base, as I've mentioned. He played catcher for a bit too, and a little bit of shortstop, and I believe he that was the only three he played. Pretty solid hitter, contact hitter. Doesn't strike out a whole lot. Nick Solak is the kind of their utility guy. You can play him at a lot of different positions, infield and outfield. And Nate Lowe, their new acquisition that they got from the Tampa Bay Rays, who has had a crazy good start to his 2021 campaign. If we're watching for speed in this game, Leody Tavares of the Rangers is the player to watch, their center fielder can steal you a lot of bases if you're a Texas Strangers fan. Now the players to watch for us. Let's watch for Shohei Otani, especially on game two when he pitches, because I want to see if he can do what he did against the White Sox, where he pitches a great performance and then hits a ball to the moon. So I'm looking forward to that. Let's also watch for Mike Trout. And let's also keep our eyes out on... Uh, Jared Walsh and David Fletcher. Those guys are players to watch for us. And to pre and the predictions, honestly, I I expect a series win at minimum for us because even without Rendon, we are still too good of a lineup to lose two of three to Texas. Like unless we have a horrible outing from any of our starters or the offense can't hit a darn thing off of any pitchers for the Rangers. I expect this to be a two out of three series win or a sweep, which I would prefer. Um, which is why for game one with Bundy on the mound, I'm going to predict a score of seven to two victory nice. for the game two Otani versus Jordan Lyles. I think that's going to be a closer game than you think because Lyles has been good against us. And I'm going to go with 4-3 to three victory in normal nine innings. And Fulton Evich versus Quintana. That's tough. Five. I'm, uh, I don't know if they'll do that. I think 6-3 uh, to three Rangers. Let's call it 6-3 to three Rangers. And they will win that game as much as I want the Angels to get the sweep of Texas so they can stay atop first place in the standings. So those are my scores for the three games and the players to watch. Please tell me what your scores, predictions might be. Leave those in the comments below. I really would love to hear from y'all what you think the score is going to be, whether we're going to lose, whether we're going to win, whether we're going to blow them out, or if we get blown out, which I don't know if that's going to happen. Please be sure that you like the video and subscribe to the channel if you want more of my Angels baseball and if you want to see me doing it. Please stay tuned for QuackCast. Hopefully I can get that out to you by Tuesday for the series against the... Or it's not actually a series. It's going to be one game against the Los Angeles Kings and then another game at home against the Vegas Golden Knights next Saturday. Hopefully that one's not a nightmare. Like... Day and Friday night's games were. Hopefully I'm not late with that like I was with this one. Have a good day. Stay safe. Let's go Angels and let's get some wins.